is part 93 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what's AJAX, advantages and disadvantages of using AJAX, applications that are out there that are currently using AJAX, and when to use AJAX. This is continuation to part 92, so please watch part 92 before proceeding with this video. So what's AJAX? AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. AJAX enable web applications to retrieve data from the server asynchronously. Let's understand this term asynchronously. First, let's understand synchronous request response cycle. Let's say we have a client server application and then I have a button on a form and let's say the button click event handler takes 10 seconds. So in a synchronous request response cycle, when we click the button, a request is sent to the server and the server is going to 10 sec take 10 seconds to process that request. So while the server is processing the request, the client is blocked and waiting for that response to be sent back to the client. As the client user interface is blocked, the user cannot do anything with that application. So basically here in a synchronous request response cycle, the user interface is blocked while the request is being processed by the server. So that is synchronous request response cycle. Whereas in a asynchronous request response cycle, the client makes a request and then the client is freed up immediately. So while the server is processing the request, the client is not blocked. The client is not waiting for the response to come back. Instead, in an AJAX enabled web application, on the client we'll have a JavaScript function waiting and listening for that response to come back. But then the client itself is freed up. So if the end user wants, he can issue another request. So the application remains responsive while the requests are still being processed by the server. As soon as the server completes processing and when the response is sent back to the client, the JavaScript method that's waiting for that response to come back will automatically update the UI. So in an asynchronous request response cycle, the applications are more responsive because they are not blocked and waiting for the response to come back. And these AJAX enabled web applications allow partial page updates. That is only the related section of the page is updated without reloading the entire page. Let's understand these partial page updates with an example. So this is the application that we have been working with in the previous session. Now look at this. You know, this page is already loaded. So we have this HTML here. Now in a, in a non-AJAX application, if you click on a button, for example, what's going to happen, the page will be posted back to the server and then the entire HTML will be reloaded once again. As a result, we'll have screen flickers as well. Okay, but then within an AJAX application, look at this, when I click on this top three link, we get the top three students and only this portion of the UI is updated, not the entire page. So as only a portion of the page is updated, these are called as partial page updates. Let's actually prove that with AJAX, we get partial page updates and to prove that, so within the index page, I'm going to print the current date and time. So just below this H2 tag, I'm going to print the current time. And let's use date time object. So date time dot now is going to give us the current date and time, but we are only interested in time. So let's uh, use two long string method. And then let's use an HTML break there. Okay, so let me copy this same piece of code and then paste that within the student partial view. So just about this table tag, I'm going to paste this. All right, let's go ahead and run this now. So when the page first loads, look at this. This is the current um, time, 1949.52. Now when I click on this top three link, look at this, this time is not going to change. So I click top three, we get the top three students and look at the time, 1950.05. Okay, when I click bottom three, again, only this portion is updated. N you know, n look at this time, this is not changed. So with AJAX, we get partial page updates. And with partial page updates, you know, the amount of traffic that's exchanged between the client and the web server is also reduced because we are not reloading the entire HTML. Only the HTML that is relevant to that section of the page is exchanged between the client and the server. 
All right, so what are the advantages of AJAX? AJAX applications are non-blocking and we just discussed that. As AJAX requests are asynchronous, the users doesn't have to wait for the request processing to complete. Even while the request is still being processed by the server, the application remains responsive and the user can still interact with the application. When the request processing is complete, the user interface is automatically updated. But this is not the case with synchronous requests. The user interface is blocked and the user cannot do anything um, while the request is still being processed at the server side. And with AJAX, we also get better performance and reduced network traffic. AJAX enables an application to send and receive only the data that is relevant. As a result, there is reduced uh, traffic between the client and the server and because of that we also get better performance. And there are no screen flickers and again because of partial page updates you are not reloading the entire page only the data that is relevant to that request and response is exchanged between the client and the server and only a portion of the page is updated and as a result we don't have screen flickers. So what are the disadvantages of using AJAX? AJAX requests cannot be bookmarked easily. Now look at this. I have already bookmarked this request. So let me go ahead and get rid of that bookmark first. So let me open up the browser and delete this bookmark that's already there. All right. Let's navigate to the index view. Let's actually run this once again. So let's click top three. So we have top three students here. Now let's say I want to bookmark this page. So in Google Chrome, we click on that star and I'm going to bookmark that. So now if I open another browser window, look at that, I have the bookmark. So when I visit that bookmark, what do I want? I want, you know, a page like this to be loaded. You know, I want top three students, I mean, uh, to be displayed. But then look at this, when I click on this, I get this one. I don't get top three. So AJAX request cannot be bookmarked. You won't get the data that you actually bookmarked. Look at this here. I bookmarked, um, you know, this page, which is displaying top three students. But when I clicked on that bookmark, you know, I don't have those top three students. I have to again click on this link. And AJAX relies on JavaScript. So if JavaScript is disabled on the client browser, AJAX applications won't work naturally. And these are harder to debug as well because of asynchronous request response cycle. So if there is a problem and you have to debug that problem, you know, uh, AJAX applications are slightly complex to debug. And search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. cannot include AJAX pages in their search index. And what are the applications that are out there that are currently using AJAX? Many websites like Google, Facebook, all of them use AJAX. For example, you know, search engines like Google, Bing, YouTube, Yahoo, etc. They use AJAX to implement autocomplete feature. For example, if we go to Google, look at that. As we start typing here, for example, difference, you know, we get autocomplete feature. And how is this implemented? This can be very easily implemented using AJAX. Okay. Similarly, Bing, Yahoo, even in YouTube, you have this autocomplete feature. And Gmail also uses AJAX to implement autosave feature. Now, if you are composing an email, if you're composing a lengthy email, you know, um, whatever content that you type into that email gets automatically saved. Okay, so if there is a power loss and if your system has shut down, uh, you know, the data that you have typed is, is retained because it's automatically saved. Okay, so to implement auto save feature, again, we can use AJAX. And Gmail also uses AJAX to implement a remote validation. For example, if we go to Gmail, we have that create account button. So when I click on this create an account button, and let's say um, here, I use username could Venkat. So this username is already used. I'm using this. So look at this. As soon as I type, you know, tab away, someone already has that username. Try another. How are we getting this validation error? Again, by using AJAX. So similarly, Facebook also use uh, AJAX to load data as you keep scrolling down 
in, in your Facebook pa page. Okay, and we discussed this remote validation in parts 89, 90, and 91 in the ASP.NET MVC tutorial. Okay, so Ajax is generally used to implement features like autocomplete, autosave, remote validation, etc. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss implementing these features. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.